Yeah. I'm Michael Bowman. I'm from Huntington University. Uh, it was a nice little coincidence. I'm also from the same research group. I'm from Jan's group, and my mentor is also Nava Fidel. And I'm going to be talking to you uh, today about using copper dope zinc telluride as a back contact for cadmium telluride solar cell applications. So I know you've already seen this at least once, once today, um, but I'll quickly go over how a cadmium telluride device works again. So phonon, photons from the sun are absorbed in the cadmium telluride layer, and that produces electron hole pairs. The holes will be pulled to the gold layer at the very bottom there, and the electrons are pulled up to the TCO layer at the top. Now the layer that I want you to focus on right now is this thin little layer of copper right there. And the purpose of this layer is to essentially dope the cadmium telluride layer become P-type. Um, but, however, this layer is not perfect as we will soon see. So the problem is that cadmium telluride is very rough when it's grown. So it has a roughness of approximately 500 nanometers and that copper layer is only 4 nanometers thick. So if we wanted to have a smooth contact between the cadmium telluride and the gold, we would need a much thicker layer in between the two. Um, so the rookie would say, would suggest, well, let's just make a 200 nanometer thick layer of copper. That will work, however, because if we do that, we're going to essentially overdope the cadmium telluride, and instead of having um, copper dope cadmium telluride, we're going to have an alloy between cadmium telluride and copper. So we don't want that. So instead, we have to take some um, other material and dope it with a small amount of copper. That way we can have a much thicker layer. And one of the materials suggested for that is zinc telluride. And the reason why is because it shares that common tellurium atom with the cad tel. That way it has a very minimal um, valence band discontinuity which is approximately 0.12 to 0.14 electron volts. Other good thing about zinc telluride is it has a larger band gap, as you can see, which prevents um, electrons from leaking back into the metal contact. All right, so all the zinc telluride films that have grown have been done using radio frequency magnetron sputtering, which you've also seen once today. So I'm only gonna quickly go over that. So you take gaseous argon, and you're excited to in plasma or using a high voltage radio frequency source. And then the argon atoms will collide with the target, releasing target atoms and electrons. The electrons help sustain the plasma while the dispelled target atoms will eventually land on the substrate. Um, in the experiments I've used, I've used uh, 50 watts of radio frequency power, a depth system pressure of 10 millitor, argon gas flow of 5 cubic centimeters, and I forgot to mention it, um, but deposition time of 30 minutes. This produces approximately 200 nanometers of zinc telluride. And so the next step was to figure out the substrate temperature that would give me the best zinc telluride. So I was looking for a very low resistivity and a carrier concentration in the order of magnitude 10 to the 20th to 10 to the 21st um, carriers per cubic centimeter. So what I did was I grew four films at four different temperatures, uh, 25, 12, 200, 250, and 300 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit off the screen. Um, but um, yeah, four films, uh, characterized them, their physical, electrical, and optical properties. Um, and as you can see, the 300 degrees Celsius was the clear winner with the lowest resistivity and the highest density. Okay, so now in the future, actually more so right now in the present, what I'm doing is I'm working on completing a Academy Intelli device, uh, two in fact, one using 200 nanometers, 2% uh, copper dope, zinc telluride as the interface between the cattel and the gold, and another one using just 4 nanometers of pure copper in between the cattel and the gold and then I'll be able to characterize the properties of both these films and then compare them and then I'll be able to conclude some of the advantages and disadvantages of using zinc telluride over pure copper as the interface layer in a CAD tel device. Sources, questions.
questions for Mike? So the four or five nanometers of plain copper is supposedly wrapping around this rough surface. Is that? Yeah, thing? yeah. So that's. It doesn't really help much with the roughness, right? It just kind of wraps around the roughness of the cattail and then leaves a rough surface to deposit the gold on. And you want a smoother surface to get a better contact. All right. That's it. Let's thank Michael again.